So, we have finally made it through part one and part two of this series, which was the planning and purchasing, which was far less hands-on than part three is going to be, where we finally build and benchmark our machine. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a PC. Those videos have been done a multitude of times by much more qualified people than I. So this is going to be more aimed towards the mindset you should have when building a computer that's going to end up in a customer's hands. But our first step, which I'm sure all of you have heard on some tech channel or another, is before you start slamming all the pieces into the actual computer case, the first thing you should do is assemble the guts of your computer on top of your motherboard box, a non-conductive surface basically, and then guarantee that all the parts you have are working, since some of you or most of you are going to be using used parts, which sometimes have some issues with performing as they should, Testing all of your parts before putting it in the computer is a very solid idea and that way you don't end up in the situation where you've built the computer and then something doesn't work and now you have to tear everything apart. So the first thing we're going to do is assemble all of our computer onto a little ghetto test bench. So now that we have all of the guts of our computer built and we can guarantee that they're posting to the screen and that all the fans are running and that everything is working as intended, the next step that we have to do is make sure that everything works under load. Sometimes you'll put a computer together and then set it all up, plug it all into the case, play a game and then instant crash. Sometimes the reliability of parts change depending on if there is a load on them or not. So before you start putting all the parts in your computer, I would recommend running it through a game or a benchmark to make sure that it also works under load. The cheapest way to do that is to simply take the SSD or the hard drive that you plan on using with the build and installing some benchmarks or games on that and then running it through there. My way of doing it, which just saves me a little bit of time and also makes things a little bit more convenient, is I have a one terabyte SSD with the Windows install that I have all of my tools, applications, games, benchmarks, everything that I need to build a computer I have on that test SSD. So whenever I have the guts of the computer assembled, it goes into that test SSD. And then I have all the tools, applications, and benchmarks to stress all these components and make sure everything is 100%. So the way that I'm actually going to test this before putting it into the case is I'm going to open up Furmark, which is a free tool that you can download off the internet. It is a GPU and CPU stress test program application and I will open up the graphics card burner and the CPU burner and I will let those two things run together to make sure that both the CPU and the GPU are at their maximum load and I'll let that run for a little bit just to make sure that the power supply isn't going to fail, the graphics card isn't going to fail, all those kind of fun stuff. One thing you might actually want to check before putting all your parts in the system is that you're getting the relative performance and decent thermals with all the parts that you have. What I mean by that is if you have, let's say in this example, the GTX 1070, there's a lot of information, videos, benchmarks on the internet of what the GTX 1070 should be giving you performance-wise with you know, a CPU that isn't bottlenecking it, of course. So what I would do is look up some video that tests the GTX 1070 in a game or a benchmark that I have, and then run the 1070 through that test to make sure I'm at least getting close to comparable numbers. That way I'm sure that the GTX 1070 isn't underclocking or hitting a thermal limit or acting weird in any sort of way and then I don't have to deal with that after building the system. Another thing that you should check is that your CPU isn't getting thermal throttled, that all of your temperatures look good even under load and that way again when you build the system together and you try to test the game for the first time you don't see your CPU spike up to 90 degrees and then have horrible performance and then having to deal with that in the case. It's much easier to confront problems outside when it's all available to get to so testing GPU, CPU, performance, their thermals, and the stability of the machine are the three key things you should make sure you do before you start slapping things into the case. If you are unaware of how to check thermals and clock speeds and performance and all that fun stuff while gaming or testing the PC, a great tool that I will refer back to many times is MSI Afterburner. It is a tool that allows you to see the temperature, the usage, the clock speed, the fan speed, 
a bunch of different things pertaining to all the components in your computer, specifically more the CPU and GPU are what MSI kind of focus on. So if you open up MSI Afterburner and you run the system through a test, you can then refer to the graphs and see what usage it got to, how hot it got, what the fan speed was, and that's all information you can use to make sure that all your parts are behaving normally. Another tool that you can use, which is kind of an add-on to MSI Afterburner, is Rivia Tuner. And what that is, it's a little overlay that will show on top of your games or benchmarks while you're running them so that you can actively monitor the temperature, the FPS, the clock speed of all of your parts while you're actually gaming or benchmarking the system. To do this, there's a little bit of setup, and this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to set that up, but that is the two tools that I use to make sure that everything is working as intended as I'm running my test. So now that everything is guaranteed working and we are 98% sure that nothing is going to crap out on us, we are going to tear this guts computer down, slap it in the case, and then we're going to get actual benchmark numbers and the thermals and all that good stuff when the system is fully built. And then from there, we will uh, get closer and closer to actually selling this computer. So when finally taking all of your parts and putting them into the case, there is no set order in how you have to put all the parts in. But with my experience, I have found a way to mitigate some tedious work by putting them in in a certain order. The first step is putting your fans in. When the case is empty, it's much easier to get to all the screws to put them in with any sort of orientation that you like. There's no GPU in the way, there's no motherboard in the way, so putting the fans in is a good first step. Then, once you've assembled your motherboard, CPU, and RAM combo outside of the case, since again, it's much easier to get to outside of the case, then putting in the motherboard is the next step in my process. After that, I take any of the cables from the case, such as the front I.O. and the USB and the power button, plug them all into the motherboard, and that way those cables are semi-managed out of the way and ran where they need to be without the mess of the power supply in there yet. Once those cables are managed, then I go ahead and put in the power supply, which adds another plethora of cables to manage, so then running those to their appropriate holes or cable management slots to put them into the actual plugs that they go in help give you an idea of where all your cables are running and keeping the mess kind of layered one on top of the other. After that, adding in your extra things such as your SSD, your hard drive, and your graphics card will fill out the rest of your system and then allow you to plug in every single power cord that you need, and then you're basically done assembling the computer. So now that the computer is all built and lighting up, you may think that you are nearing the end of the building process or having to mess with the computer, and you're getting closer and closer to getting that sweet sale that we owe so desire, but there's a few other things that I wanted to cover and I would suggest doing before you go into the preparation for sale. The biggest thing that I would try and bestow upon you is benchmarking the system and stress testing the system. This helps provide information to the buyer that, you know, what game they want to play, how well it performs on your system. You can also give guarantees that it's made it through 24 hour stress tests and the like. It's really a tool that you can use to help give peace of mind to someone potentially looking at the computer. So that is the next big step. So I didn't 100% complete putting all of the computer together. The cable management isn't done, we'll get to that later. The test SSD is still plugged in versus the SSD that's actually going in the system, and none of the panels are on currently. But what I usually do at this point is I put all the panels on to make sure that we are testing the case as it would thermally be in general usage once you sell it, and then I run it through a suite of games and benchmarks that I think help cover the spectrum of people that might potentially buy it. The two most important things that you should go over when talking about benchmarking, in my opinion, is what games and benchmarks should you use, and how exactly should you go about benchmarking, and what tools can you use to do that. I will split that into two, and we will cover each separately, and we'll get right into that. So when talking about the games that I benchmark and the benchmark tools that I use, my main goal is to cover a broad spectrum of gamers that might potentially buy this computer. You want to use games that maybe are more esports titles or AAA titles, games that are popular at the time, and then there's other games that I benchmark purely for the amount that they're benchmarked. A good example of this is GTA V. Not only is it still a popular game that many people play, it has also been benchmarked by a very wide range of hardware. Because it's been out for so long, it's seen so many generations of graphics cards and CPUs and the like, that if someone's trying to compare their old system or a competitive system to yours, they can actually easily look up GTA V 
with those specs and the specs that you provide and the benchmark numbers that you show, and it's a great way to compare the two. Another great way to compare two products if you are a buyer or if you're talking to someone who might potentially buy your computer is using standardized benchmark suites. This is something like 3D Mark Time Spy or Superposition Benchmark or the like. This simply gives you a number that you can compare to the other computer or system that they're looking at, and it gives them a more visual representation of the difference in performance between the two. It's not hard cut science. It combines the CPU and the GPU score. You know, some people might use the GPU or CPU more. There's like RAM and storage configurations, it's all that stuff, but at least it's a rough idea of the raw performance between one system and the other. So it's useful for both the buyer and the seller in some cases. Sometimes when I'm looking at other computers that I've sold and I'm trying to price a computer that I'm building, I will compare the one that I'm building, its benchmark suite numbers to the ones that are already sold to try and get it into that price range. But that's kind of another topic for this video that doesn't really need to be gone into in depth. So to try and condense that advice a little bit, you should be going for popular games that a lot of people play currently. These are games like Fortnite, Call of Duty Warzone, CSGO, potentially GTA 5. Also, going for benchmarks that a lot of other people have benchmarks or you commonly see in benchmark videos, which again is GTA 5 or like Far Cry 5 or things of that nature where there's built-in benchmark tools. Rainbow Six Siege is actually another good example of that. And then also AAA titles that are new or popular at the time, something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, Metro Exodus is a good example. Maybe that's getting a little bit on the old side. But new games that push hardware to its limits, Cyberpunk 2077 is a good example of that right now so that the consumer that's potentially buying the computer has a broad spectrum no matter where they fall in, whether they're just going to play esports titles such as CSGO, or if they play a lot of Fortnite with their friends, or they simply want to play the latest and greatest, they have a good idea of what performance they can be receiving when they buy the computer from you. So that covers what I benchmark and why, so now I'll get into how I actually go about it so that you have the relative knowledge to also benchmark systems that you've put together. So when it comes to the benchmarking tools that I actually use, there's the main one that I use and a little plugin that goes with it, and that is MSI Afterburner and then the plugin Rivia Tuner. And basically what these two things provide is MSI Afterburner can show you a plethora of information. It can be your CPU temp, your GPU fan speed, your memory usage, it has a whole laundry list of things it can show you about your system, and then Rivia Tuner basically allows you to see that information displayed on a game or a benchmark while you're running it, which allows you to monitor temperatures, see the FPS you're getting, your CPU and GPU utilization. It is the perfect tool for benchmarking, I would say. I would say that most people that benchmark or that I've seen benchmark use this tool. There's probably plenty of videos on in-depth how to set it up, but if you need a video like that, I could probably provide one, but again, it's probably been done better than I could manage. But to put it simply, you would download MSI Afterburner, you would make sure that Rivia Tuner is included in that download, you would set up a hot key or shortcut key to start and end a benchmark run, and then it will paste it into a little text document at the end to show you what your average FPS was during your benchmark. So what information should you actually look for when benchmarking? I would say that FPS is probably the most important one that everyone's going to be looking for, and average FPS is the number that you'll actually record for your advertisements on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. I would say that you could record things like your 1% and 0.1% lows, and your minimums and maximums, and all that great information that us computer nerds would love, but when I first started posting computers back um, a year and a little bit ago, I had problems with my listings where people would see the 1% low figure or the 0.1% low figure and any of that fun stuff and confuse it with how the game performed at low settings or how the game performed at maximum settings because they didn't understand the terminology being used and it seemed to confuse more buyers than it helped. So I would say that you could actually probably keep it simple here and just save the average FPS data and just use that for the actual advertisement that you put up. So other information that I think that you should keep an eye on but you don't necessarily need to record are things like your temperature, your CPU and GPU utilization, and other things like your 
clock speeds and RAM usage and things like that just to make sure that the system is working as intended. I've gone into depth in older videos on how to pair certain things and why to pair certain things. We also covered it very briefly at the beginning of this series in part one, so I'm not going to go into that, but if you see that your system is horribly imbalanced after doing all of your planning and building, you might want to scrap it and start again because trying to sell a system that's horribly imbalanced is not only financially eh, but it's not an easy sell to a consumer either. Then as far as temperatures, you really just want to make sure that the computer is not going to melt. You also have to take into account that the person that buys this might not put it in the best place thermally. They might not take care of it and get dust out of the fans. So you should really lean on the safe side when looking at the temperatures. If you're riding the borderline of a safe temperature or it being too loud for the temperature that it's actually getting to, then you might want to rethink how many fans you need or your cooling solutions. And that might also put you back a step into the planning. But that's kind of how computer flipping goes. You potentially will run into small problems that you need to overcome here and there. And then simply monitoring the other parts to make sure everything is working well. Again, we kind of covered this when we built the system out of the case, but now that everything is being put through the actual gaming load that you're going to be using it for, it's important to make sure that all the parts are working as intended so that when you sell it to the person, there's going to be no problems when they go to set it up at home. So now that you have the computer mostly built and put together and your benchmarks ran, you're really getting near the end of being prepared to sell the computer. The last few things that you'll probably need to do is tidying up your cable management, making sure that all the exterior bits of the computer look nice, such as cleaning off your glass and getting rid of any dust that might have built up. And then really you are ready to start thinking about how to sell it, which again we'll be covering in the next part of this series and hopefully the final part of this series, which is actually putting together the ads and selling the computer. And then you have your sale and your cash, which you can then put back into this loop of planning, purchasing, building, and selling. But with that, that really wraps up the informational part of this video. But at the end of every single part of the series, we go over the example build that we're going through. So I'll probably talk a little bit about the benchmarking numbers we got maybe any hiccups that I might have encountered, and then bring us to a close. So I ran our example build through my normal benchmarking process, which starts initially with checking the thermals and all that whatnot to make sure the computer is not going to be exploding while running through the games. And then the text you're seeing on screen now is the result of all the benchmarks I got done, basically just the FPS average or the score correlating with whatever application it was going with. And then you need to also take note or include the settings and the resolution that you run for each game and test. That way the customer knows that you're not running very low settings to help boost your FPS numbers or anything like that. But once I got all the way through, I got all my numbers down and now I'm ready and armed with all the information I need to actually start selling this computer. So that's where you should be at at this point at the end of this video. But with that, we are actually at the end of the video. If you learned something, felt inspired, or you're following along in this series, hit that like button. If you think that this is an absolute waste of your time, hit that dislike button. If you want to see more of this series or more computer flipping tips, advice, adventures, stories, etc., hit that subscribe button and I'll try my best to keep you around. Without further ado, have a good day, guys.